I'm concerned about effective stakeholder engagement, not just stakeholder engagement. And by that, I mean, I must have access to information. So we are here talking about ecosystem restoration, how we are going to monitor it, what are the indicators for target tool. So coming from a local community perspective, I need information that is communicated in simple language to me. I saw a question already about ecosystems classification. At the local level, the people may not know that much about the IUC and classifications, but they know we have mangrove wetlands, they know we have forest wetlands, we have marine ecosystems. The reason I say effective engagement is that we are at the local level. We know our communities, we know our vulnerabilities. When it comes to ecosystem restoration, we think about trees, we think about plants. And so we know what our soil types are. We know about the weather conditions, the heat, the drought. So if you're working on a restoration project, the communities have to be involved. The local ownership, the local buy-in. Because who's going to keep the care of those plants? Who is going to ensure that they're watered? In my country, we have a lot of damage from roving atlas. They just rove and come and eat down the plants. But when you have effective stakeholder engagement, the people will ensure that those plants are nurtured, cared for, and cultured to fruition. Another thing with effective engagement, we see the need also for advocacy. We are taking care of the plants, taking care of the situation, but there were times where we have to advocate for better practices, better um, governance for the higher work from the government. Because sometimes we have investors, we have investments, that require some of the best lands along the coast. And what's on the coast? Our wetlands are there. And we are not going to start to see our wetlands being destroyed. So there were times now where we have to advocate. We have to remind the government, you made commitments. You made commitments to ecosystem restoration. Why are you causing destruction? So at the local level, we have a lot of roles and responsibilities to ensure that the decade for ecosystem restoration is productive, is satisfying, protects nature. And so we work together in groups and we build partnerships and collaborations with the government so that they can know what we are doing so that our work can be part of the reported mechanism because you need the data. You need the data from the local groups, what's going on, you know? And so the data from the bottom up is very important. And a lot of our work is voluntary. And because the ideas come from the people, it's best practices for sustainability. That's how we look at it. It's not something that's going to start today and end tomorrow. It has to go on. It has to develop the people in the communities. And when we partner with the government, when there's training, when there's meetings, we can build capacities because we don't have all the answers when it comes to the monitoring and the indicators. But by working together, we learn and we contribute to the process. And hopefully the government can see that our involvement makes the work easier for them because we at the grassroots level, we are doing quite a bit to keep systems afloat.